the layout's gone green. So stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how I did it. Well, good morning. Welcome back to Piccadilly. And so no, I've, I forgot to do this introduction, so I've actually started the scenics work there with a bit of glue. You can now see I've now, I've now painted all of that area in, gra in dark brown. And just to show you the other side of that, and the white bit is the glue I've just put on. So all I'm gonna do now is to start putting some scatters on. Right, um, just to show you this area down here now, um, I've gone ahead a little bit and put um, just ballast in there, to be honest with you, with a bit of sand. Um, to be honest, I, th I was going to put some bigger stones in there, but um, I can't find any, basically. So what I'm doing is building it up in the same manner as I have done pretty much what you see to your left or what you have seen to, your, to the left. Um, sort of bury it a little bit. The river going through Dinting Viaduct doesn't appear to be particularly obvious. So I'm just going to cause this to be a little overgrown. So you can still see it, obviously, because there's no point in putting it in if you can't see it. But sort of build this area up a little bit more over here. And then obviously I'll build the trees and that back up. Right, welcome back. So you can see now all this sort of base layer, if you like, is in. And all the, it's all this whitiness because it's got the glue all over it. So obviously that will dry shortly. Now, I will put um, some trees at this end. Not too many, maybe a couple, three. I don't want to overload it, to be honest with you. I like the openness of the, of the area. But I do want to respect the fact there were trees here so I will put a few but this area where the viaduct is generally speaking I'll probably leave it pretty much as it is um, to be honest with you I might put the odd one in but it won't be much because I want I want people to see the viaduct and I want to be able to enjoy the fact that it's an open area um, going down here as I said this area here and particularly as the tracks disappear there will be loads of trees in this area and I will put some on the unit here when I do that, okay? But um, again, it's more to do with what I can fit in um, and the space I've got and all that sort of stuff. So this side will remain reasonably open because I do like the view as it goes down there, even though it's got uh, bags of flock on there at the moment. <laughs> but anyway, um, what I right, so you can see here, I've got two point motors just there and there. Now, I put a mound in here deliberately so I can put foliage over the top of the point motors to make them less obvious. I have got to be really careful um, not to gum up the workings. So I can drape foliage over the top. So what I'll probably do is put some um, neat PVA down there and put scatter on the top of that and then um, put something like lichen over the top of that 
maybe with some spray hairspray something like that and then scatter over the top of that but being really careful not to uh, gum up these so I can create like an air gap if you like so that the arm can still move across right I'll get that done and I'll show you shortly kind of like that um, it does look a little bit messy at the moment obviously with the wet glue but it will look an awful lot better once it's been ballasted and that's the next job so I'm not going to show you that you've seen ballasting 101 times um, so I'll show you after I've done it all right well there we go then so that's the ballasting in that area completed so far um, I've left a space down here for a point motor on this point and it will be a surface mounted I really don't like those ones that go underneath and obviously there will have to be one that goes in there um, so I've not ballasted this far track um, purely the reason that it's going to have to have a point motor there is because this is going to be a bridge here obviously and I'm not going to be able to get in to, to switch the point so I'm going to have to have a point motor on that it's going to be quite awkward if I don't um, so yeah it just looks a big sloppy mess I've done my usual trick of colouring the glue with grey brown black um, so it dries almost as I want it really to be honest I don't have to do an awful lot to it after it's done right so it's a case of just leaving that now and but I still have to do this unit here so I'll, it's going to be a very similar sort of process to what I've showed you before and you've seen millions of times on varying videos from varying um, YouTubers and whatever whatever so I'll probably just do that and I'll show you at the end right I thought I'd just come back and show you this this is dinting as you can see and obviously you can see that bit of track's been ballasted now just with a hint of brown in the color here so it's quite pale um, as opposed to what it's like down there but um, this tree was made from this type of thing now as you can see in the past I've given it a coat of flock but what I decided to do this time is to put plant it and then smother it with PVA glue and then cover it with clump foliage and then sprinkle some finer um, stuff over the top and I know it's covered in glue at the moment and you can't really see the effect of it but I think that looks considerably better um, of um, these trees over here I've always been a little bit not so happy with them and since they settle they look quite wiry so what I might try and do is stick with the same sort of thing, but cover it in clump foliage, then go in with scatters and see what that looks like. I still might cover that with some clump foliage on top because they have gone a bit dull and they do look a bit wiry. So I might come back to these and uh, one day you might find them all bright and colourful or green anyway. <laughs> so this area does look considerably brighter. And um, I'll probably do the same type of trees down here, as I've mentioned before, and see if I can make some really big ones. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I've got some wooden scenics ones, i.e. these. Now, if I can find a way of making the trunk a bit longer, which I'm sure will be easy, may even be a bit of tube or something like that. Just make that trunk a bit, um, you know, a tiny bit longer, maybe two or three centimetres or a couple of centimetres at the most. And um, that should look, you know, quite uh, quite nice there. And um, cover it with some, use the, using the um, fibre, the polyfiber, then the clump foliage, and we'll see what happens. You know, it's all an experiment, isn't it? Sometimes things work and sometimes things don't, you know? And you have to try these things to find out the best ways. Anyway, let's move on. Right, so there we are then. That's about, I've done about as much as I can um, for the time I've got in this video. So you can see now I've put some more trees in this area, as I said I would. So I've got some trees on the top here and these were done last night. I think it was that one I showed you in an earlier clip, which was built up from one of those cheap Chinese trees and then smothered it with clump foliage and then flock on the top. You can see one of the silver birches that I made very similar to this and those. And there were some other trees um, 
which are basically made from those Woodland Scenics ones. You buy the Woodland Scenics wire stems, bend those into the shape. So I put some uh, fibre on top of those, built it up with clump foliage and scatter on the top. And I think, to be honest with you, they do, they are starting to look a little bit better. Um, this type of thing was three or four, five even, of those cheap Chinese trees, that's this one, glued together to make a taller tree. Again, clump foliage, that type of thing. And that there, I managed to, when I went to my local model shop in Northampton um, a couple of weeks ago, they had a whole load of lichen um, for a really cheap price. And apparently it's come down. Now that is, to be honest, that's a preferred method to use. So I bought four bags, but I don't want to use it all over the place. I want to use it sort of here and there, not on every tree. So um, that was done by that. So again, another chi cheap Chinese tree smothered with lichen this time and then clump foliage over the top and well, like uh, scatter straight over the top of that one, I think. And again, there's one down there. Excuse my finger being all green, but um, that one there was made very similar methods there. But you can see that is a much more complete scene now. And as I scan you back, you can see all the ballasting. It does look a little bit on the diseased side. I might go over that with um, a spray just to sort of tone down those quite dramatic <laughs> colour changes. Um, we'll see. I might, if it grows on me, I might just leave it because sometimes you do get tracked and it looks a little bit like that, doesn't it? Now, it obviously needs uh, vacuuming, which I'll do in a minute. But and then if I take you down to look at that unit at the bottom. There we go then. So you can see now I've completed the unit. And um, so obviously there's a range of different trees made in different ways uh, that sort of um, go along. So we've got a lichen uh, tree here, or large bush if you like. That's a cheap Chinese tree with lots of clump foliage. Likewise, um, we've got some woodland scenics trees where you've got the armatures and so on around, different types. And there is a cheap Chinese tree, which I did before, covered in... Um, just covered in flock and I'll just plonk that in it's just one on the layout and I don't think you know I think they have their place and um, you can easily make them look a lot better than they do so you know it's it's getting there now and as I said before it's not intended to be a perspective scene what we've got here is the two violets coming together to lead your eye kinder into this area here the trains will just disappear from behind a tree lined wall if you like so we're going to have as i've said many times the millennium walk coming round here i think it's the tall vale um, which is part of the new mill scene and you've got the twin tunnels which will be there and they are there ready to go back on the layout and obviously it will be built in um, you've got two brackets on the on the back scene there, which will support that upper level. And yes, they are tall enough for a train to go underneath. So I'm really not that worried by it. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with the way that scene is looking. So I think that's that's come on very nicely now, and I'm much more happy with these trees. And um, I think they've turned out an awful lot better. Anyway, I think I'll leave the main action just there. I will have some running shots uh, following this. But uh, anyway, you just take care of yourselves and I will see you again here very soon on Piccadilly. Bye for now.